If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In order to find the resulting displacement from Dallas to Chicago, we want to break our journey up into two segments, one from Dallas to Atlanta and then the other from Atlanta to Chicago. So let's go ahead and set up a little table to do that. So the D to A represents Dallas to Atlanta, and then A to C is Atlanta to Chicago. We're going to start with the Dallas to Atlanta part of the trip, and we need to find what are known as the X and the Y components of that trip. And if we look carefully, we can see that we have a right triangle formed by that journey. And maybe to get a closer look at it, we can draw it in. And so in red, we have drawn that right triangle. The right angle would be right here. Hopefully we can see that the hypotenuse of that right triangle is 730 miles. And what we want to note is that this 730 miles can be broken up into so-called X and Y components. So this distance right here would be considered the X component since it's a horizontal distance. And then this small distance right here would be a Y component. Let's start with the X component. And we know from right triangle trigonometry that the cosine of an angle is going to equal the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And if we look carefully at this angle right here, we are told that that angle is five degrees. So we could safely say that the cosine of five degrees is equal to the adjacent side to that angle. And hopefully we can see that the side adjacent to that angle is marked as X divided by the hypotenuse, which is 730. Now, if we solve this equation for that X component, we could multiply both sides of the equation by 730 which would cancel it out on the right. And we could see that the X component is equal to 730 times the cosine of five. So we're going to plug that into our formula, or into our table, I should say, over here. 730 times the cosine of five. Similarly, we know that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, we could say that the sine of five is equal to the opposite side. And if we look carefully, we can see that opposite from the five degree angle is this side right here, which we have marked Y. And then we would divide that by the hypotenuse, which is again 730. Solving that equation for y in a similar way that we solve for x, we would see that the y component is 730 times the sine of 5. So that completes the journey from Dallas to Atlanta. Let's do a similar exercise for Atlanta to Chicago. So we've drawn a right triangle superimposed onto the map here. Here's the right angle right here. And if we look carefully, we can see that this segment right here would be the y component since it's vertically oriented. And then this segment right here would be the x component since it's horizontally oriented. The angle right here is 21 degrees. We can turn to the sine of that 21 degree angle and set it equal to the opposite side. Now, if we look carefully, opposite to the 21 degree angle is the x component. So we would have that x component over the hypotenuse, which is 560. Now we'll solve this equation for x by multiplying both sides by 560. And we can see that x is equal to 560 times the sine of 21. Now be careful here because if we look carefully, we can see that the x component is actually pointing to the left, the y component pointing straight up. Since the x component is pointing to the left, we actually have to stick a negative sign on this. So we're going to write the x component as negative 560 times the sine of 21. The y component is going to turn out to be the cosine. So we can write 560 times the cosine of 21. Remember that's cosine because the y component is adjacent to the 21 degree angle. The y component, as mentioned, is pointing straight up. So we're going to leave that as a positive value. So now that we have filled in our chart, the next thing we want to do is find the total x and the total y component of this displacement. So to do that, all we have to do is pick up our calculators and add the two x components together, and then also do the same thing for the y components. Make sure your calculator is set to degree mode. So let's go ahead and add the x components first. And when we do that, we get about 526.5. And then when we add the y components together, we get roughly 586.4. Now that we have those two components, what we can do is draw a new triangle. Now notice that both components are positive. And so when we draw that new triangle, which we can do over here, we can pick an arbitrary starting point. Because the x component is positive, we're going to project a vector in the positive x direction. And we'll label that with a distance of 526.5. And then we'll project a y component straight up. And we're going straight up because the y component is positive, And that distance is 586.4. The resultant distance that we're looking for is actually this right here. 
and for now we can just call that r. And we know that because this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we would have the hypotenuse squared is equal to one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared. We'll pick up our calculators and simplify the right hand side. And so we have that result. And then when we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we end up with roughly 788. And since these di distances were measured in miles, that would be the unit here. So the distance directly traveled from Dallas to Chicago would be 788 miles. But we also need the angle. And we can go back to this drawing that we made, and this is the angle that we would be searching for. Now, we know that the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent. And in our triangle, the opposite side is 586.4, and then the adjacent is 526.5. And now to actually solve for the angle theta, we have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the left side just becomes theta, and then we have to take the inverse tangent of this fraction right here. And when we do that, we get approximately 48.1 degrees. And we can see that that angle is measured in a particular way. Maybe to see that, we can come back up here. So let's draw a horizontal line this way. The angle that we just found would be roughly like so. And we can see that that angle is moving to the north of the easterly direction. Remember, east is pointing this way. And then the fact that this angle is measured in an upward fashion means that it's being measured north of the easterly direction. So we can say 48.1 degrees north of east. And so that is the correct answer for the direction of the displacement. And then here is the magnitude of the displacement.